All right, today we are going to create a frequency distribution. Um, what we have here are 30 recent test scores. Um, for this particular one, we are going to use six classes. In order to set this up, what we want to start with is we want to find our class width. To find the class width, you are going to take your maximum value minus your minimum value and divide it by the number of classes. Okay, so for this one, our maximum value is 95. That's our absolutely highest value. Our minimum value is 47. So we would plug these values into our formula. 95 minus 47. And for this one, I am going to use six classes. So when we do this, 95 minus 47 gives us 48. 48 divided by six ends up giving us eight. The problem with using eight is if we started with our class width, and we started counting by eights and we only wanted six classes, we would end up missing our maximum value. So no matter what, you are always going to round up the class width, even if it's a whole number. Even if this is a whole number, we want to round up. And so we are going to use nine as our class width. This is going to be our value. So when we're setting this up, we start with our minimum as our first value. So our minimum was 47. And then to go to the next class, we just use our class width. So I would add nine to each of these. So our next one would be 56. We're going to add nine again, which puts us at 65. Add nine again gives us 74. Add nine again, we get 83. And then we add nine one last time and we get 92. Okay. Had we counted by eight, our last class width would have just missed um, the 95. So we would have just missed the 95 and then you wouldn't have all of your values. So no matter what, always round up your class width. So these are what are known as our lower limits. This is our lowest value of our class. And then we need to find our upper limit. So we're going to find everything that goes up to there. So with our upper limit, what we're going to do is we're going to do one less than the next class. So this would be everything from 47 to 55. We would continue in that manner. So 64 is one less, 73, 82, 91, and then to get to our last class, um, we can take, if you notice, the distance between each of these is the same as the class width, the plus 9. So we would just add 9 to this value. So 100 would be our last, the end of our last class. Okay. Um, moving into the next category, the frequency. The frequency, what you can do to help you out is you could go through each of these and just put a tally mark in the class that it goes through. So like 88 goes in this class, so I would put a tally mark. 82 falls in this class. 67 falls in this class. 81, 83 would go down here. 70, 88, 72, 77. 89 would come down here. 47, 78, 80, put us at 5, um, 57, 60 would also be in that one, 56, 76, 73, and I'm just going down these columns, 92, 62, 91 falls in this category, 80, 60, falls here, 95, 75, 82, 50, 74, 92, 
and 85. And then what we would do is we would count our tally marks and that's how many is in each class. So we would have two that fall between 47 and 55. We have five that fall between 56 and 64. We have four between 65 and 73. 10 between 74 and 82. Six between 83 and 91. And three in our last class. What you always want to check for at this point is to make sure that the sum of your frequencies, which we're gonna call F, remember that this is sigma. Sigma always means summation notation or the sum of values. So the sum of our frequency, if we add them all up, we have seven plus four is 11, 21, 27, and a total of 30. And if you look, we started with 30 original data points. If this number does not match up to how many points you have, you probably either made a mistake with the frequency or you forgot to round up on your class width. Um, if you don't round up, you may miss your maximum value, so you always want to make sure your maximum value is contained in your last class width. The midpoint is something that is used um, by some statisticians to label the histogram. If you were creating a histogram from this, um, you can use the midpoint of the class to label it. Um, you can also use your lower class limits. Um, there's some textbooks also use class boundaries, which I'm not going to touch on in this case, but it is something else that could be used. But the midpoint, this value right here, is always just the middle or the average of these two. So we would just take our lower class limit plus our upper class limit and divide by two. Once you do it for the first one, you don't have to continue doing that for the rest of them. Um, so for the first one, we would just do 47 plus 55 divided by two. So I'm gonna just 47 plus 55 divided by two. And this ends up giving us 51. Okay, so the midpoint or the middle point between these two is 51. And then you can use your class width, the plus nine to go to the next value. So I would just, instead of having to reuse this formula six times, we would just take and add the class width to get to the next one. So 51, our next one would be at 60, 69, 78, 87. Just keep adding nine. And always make sure that your midpoint makes sense. This midpoint should always fall halfway between your lower class limit and your upper class limit. If it doesn't, then you did something wrong. So that's your kind of check to make sure that everything looks okay. Um, for the relative frequency, this is just in relationship to all of the rest of the data points, what percentage or proportion fall in this specific class. Okay, to find relative frequency, we are just going to take F and divide it by our number of terms. So this value down here in is just the sum of all of your values or the number in your sample. Um, so for this one, I'll show the work on the first one, and then after that, I'll just put the decimal approximation. Um, this one, we would just take 2 divided by 30 because there are 2 out of 30 that fall in this category. I'm going to round this to three decimal places. So this ends up being 0 0.067. The next one I would take into 5 divided by 30. Again, that would be 0 0.167. I'm just going to write it down as three decimal places. Um, 4 divided by 30 ends up giving us 0 0.133. Um, 10 divided by 30, this would be our biggest category, so we can see that the majority of them fall, the majority of the test scores fall between 74 and 82, which is what you would expect to see on a well-written test. So 33% fall from a 74 to an 82. Um, the next category from an 83 to a 91, we have 6 out of 30, which ends up being 20%. Just to stay consistent, I wrote the three decimal places. Really 0 0.2 is fine, but just to be consistent, um, and then the last one, 3 divided by 30, gives us 10% or 0 0.100. You have another check here um, that always will work is if the sum of this, the sum of this column, the sum of the frequency divided by your sample size always has to add up to be 1. If you round it and you round it inconsistently, it is possible that you could get something like 0.999 or 
um, 1.001 or something like that. Um, just be careful about rounding. The sum of this should be one because 100% of your data should fall by the end of the last class. Uh, the last category is the cumulative frequency. For the cumulative frequency, it means all values that fall by the end of that class. So if we look at this one, the end of this class by 55, we had two total values that fell by the end of that class, so we would just leave it as two. For the next one, we're looking for all test values that are below, or 64 or below, so um, we just take and we add these values together. So I would take 2 plus 5, which gives us 7. So we know that we had 7 by the end of this one. So by the end of 73, we would add 4 more to this. So we have a total of 11 students that, got, that scored a 73% or below on this particular test. Um, and we would just continue in that pattern. We would take this value here, the 11, and we would add the next one. So there was 10 more that fell. So there's a total of 21 of the 30 students that had an 82 or below. Um, add six more would give us 27. And then the last one should add up to your number of data points like we had. Um, in another video, I will be taking this and making a histogram from it. We will look at both how to do a frequency histogram, how to do a relative frequency histogram. And then in another video, I would also show you how to do an OGI from the cumulative frequencies. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.